Hello everyone, very very good evening and today we are going to talk about image based questions in radiology. So my goal today will be I will talk about image based questions and the beautiful thing is radiology is only about image based questions. What are image based questions? Let's try to understand. In your exam, especially NEET PG, you will have a lot of questions which will be in the framework of a clinical question image four choices and my question to all of you is okay my question to all of you is let's see if you can answer better okay in the image based question what will you see first will you see the image question or choice i want you to tell me in the chat box all of you super rocking students i know i am already sensing that one of the toppers of the need PG is in the chat box. Mujhe lag raha hai, pata chal raha hai mujhe, batao. Okay, sabse pehle, image based question. From which, what will you see in the image based question first? Will you look at the image, choices or the question? Sabse pehle kya dekhoge? Always remember to see the choices first. 90% of the students who do the mistake is, they look at the image first. If you look at the image first, you are thinking infinite. You are thinking what it can be. But actually, you only need to think on those four choices which are given in the exam. So first see the choice, then look at the image to rule out, to rule out and reach to the answer one by one. Yes, I already know. Most of you are correctly answering. We need to look at the choices first, then the image and the stem of the question. But always start from choices, restrict your thinking process to four choices. Okay. Now, one student is saying, why choices first? I will tell you. Look, if you don't see the choice, okay, imagine now. Okay, beta, imagine now. Everybody try to imagine. You are looking at this image in the exam. Okay. This is just a sample image I am showing you. This is not an exam question. Okay. In the exam, you are thinking, what is this? Is it a CT scan or a MRI? Is it a tumor? Is it not? Is it hydrocephalus? Is it epilepsy case? Is it Alzheimer's dementia? You are thinking of thousands of things. But you don't need to think of thousands of things. You need to think on what is the choice. Restrict your thinking process to four choices. If all four choices are having MRI, then you don't need to think if this is an MRI or not because it is already in the choice. Always start from choices. You will save time. You will get more correct. And you will start getting more decisive in the exam. Okay. Are you clear now? Are you able to understand? I will show you this approach today with a series of clinical questions. With a short clinical history, image and four choices. Same as what you get in the NEET PG exam. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me know in the ch chat box. And I am sure you are all enjoying the GOAT edition of DQB. Where we have... Change the way MCQ practice should be done. It should be done with a teacher guiding you on the approach, not the you groping in essays and finding out what is the correct line to be known. One line is the key. Always one or two lines are key to the question and that concept and we will try to help you open that concept for you. I am first of all starting with a question on bone tumor. This is one of the most frequently asked questions in NEET PG and FMG exam. Look at the history and the choices. We are going to look for four conditions here. Aneurysmal bone cyst, fibrous dysplasia, Langerhans cell histiocytosis, simple bone cyst. Okay. Now, let us imagine now in our mind, aneurysmal bone cyst will be seen where? Aneurysmal bone cyst will be seen where? Anyone? Aneurysmal bone cyst will be seen in children, metaphysis, and it will be a expansi lesion. Aneurysmal bone cyst will be seen in children, metaphysis, and it will be grossly expansile. What about fibrous dysplasia? Fibrous dysplasia will be seen in neck of femur. Or in the craniofacial skeleton. Neck of femur, craniofacial skeleton. Anyone, what is the appearance in fibrous dysplasia? 
ग्राउंड ग्लास अपियरेंस ऑफ दी बोन ग्राउंड ग्लास अपियरेंस ऑफ दी बोन लाइक यू सॉ इन दास्ट नीट पीजी एग्जाम लैंगर हेंसेल हिस्टोसाइटोसिस यू विल लुक फॉर द स्कल एक्स रे ऑफ अ चाइल्ड द स्कल एक्स रे ऑफ अ चाइल्ड विल शो जोग्राफिक स्कल मल्टीपल लिटिक लीजन विद बेवर्ल्ड एजेस बेवर्ल्ड एजेस ओके and i am greatly pointed out by many students shefford crook deformity fibrous dysplasia very good super proud of you simple bone cyst will be seen in child metaphysis it will be central non expansile lesion central non expansile lesion are you clear now so this is what is mcq in a mcq once you know the choices now it becomes wiser we are going to look at the image with this in mind okay everybody now look at the x ray everybody now look at the x ray tell me the age of the patient tell me okay bachas everybody tell me the age of the patient is it a adult or a child rock the chat box and tell me is it a adult or a child we are looking at a child because the growth plates are open so we know the, and this is not neck of femur the craniofacial skeleton so so it is not fibrous dysplasia this is not a skull x ray they are not showing me lytic lesions in the skull they are not showing me geographic skull beveled edges probably it is a either aneurysmal bone cyst or simple bone cyst okay now this cystic lesion is it expansile non expansile the size of the disease is like what it should have been there is no expansion that means it is not blood vessel spaces it is just a simple bone cyst and i also see there is a pathological fracture and the fragment has fallen down like a leaf there is a fallen leaf in this cyst all this points to anyone now what will be your answer simple bone cyst now we know the answer is going to be simple bone cyst okay child centrally located non expansile lesion with a fallen leaf sign fallen leaf sign on x ray seen in simple bone cyst if you have a pathological fracture i am sure one of the exams either upcoming fmg exam or neat pg exam you should have a question on a bone tumor simple bone cyst is one of the most favorite image based questions in the neat pg and fmg exams are you clear everybody done okay so keep a score card also ready okay i will share the pdf of today's discussion on the dams official telegram channel not the group channel remember and and the link of the channel is already in the comment box okay beta next question let's try and solve this Two year old boy has progressive bow leg, and the choices are. So whenever we are going to look at the X ray now, we are going to look for these choices: scurvy, hyperparathyroidism, rickets, hyperthyroidism. So what kind of findings do you expect in scurvy patient? In scurvy patient, you should have a ring-like margin to the epiphysis, which is called as Wimberger's ring. Wimberger's ring, okay? Are you clear? एक बच्चा कह रहा है सर मैं ABC और GCT में कंफ्यूज हो जाता हूं बेटा जाइंट सेल ट्यूमर इज सीन इन दी एपीफाइसिस ऑफ अ अडल्ट कीप इट इन माइंड GCT सी टी एपीफाइसिस ऑफ द अडल्ट स्कर्वी विल शो विम्बर्गर्स रिंग वाइट लाइन ऑफ फ्रेंकल पेलकन स्पर्स पेंसिल थिन कॉटेक्स so scurvy you should have wimberger ring a ring like margin to the epiphysis you should see a dense metaphyseal line called as white line of frenkel pelkan spurs what will you find in hyperparathyroidism what will you find in hyperparathyroidism okay anyone hyperparathyroidism will show sub periosteal resorption of the bone sub periosteal resorption of the bone is earlier seen on the second and third digit radial aspect middle phalanx okay everybody what will you see in the skull x ray in hyperparathyroidism salt and pepper skull 
salt and pepper skull okay and if it is hyperparathyroidism secondary to renal failure chronic renal failure you can see secondary hyperparathyroidism which will show you rugger jersey spine as well which is correctly mentioned by some of you well done okay what about rickets in rickets the finding will be growth plate widening growth plate widening cupping splaying and fraying at the metaphysis cupping splaying and fraying at the metaphysis of the bone okay now keep all of this in your mind and now please look at the x-ray and tell me what do you think this x-ray is showing now if you notice this is your epiphysis there is no ring like margin there is no wimberger's ring definitely we are not looking at scurvy look at the metaphysis beta look at the metaphysis do you feel it is getting more broad yes that means we are dealing with splaying of metaphysis look at the growth plate everybody look at the growth plate i am sure all of you top achievers now tell me growth plate looks widened metaphysis looked splayed little bit of cupping is also there look at the other side also splaying cupping irregularity fraying what do you think we are dealing with okay and we reach to one of the most commonly asked mcq in neat pg and fmg exam rickets the answer is rickets hyperthyroidism usually there is no specific radiological thing that they will ask you either they will show you a thyroid scan with graves disease or they might talk about the ultrasound image of the thyroid with thyroid inferno but uh, in graves disease but x-ray showing hyperthyroidism is unlikely hypothyroidism they might ask you if they ask you delayed bone age delayed bone age epiphyseal dysgenesis hypothyroidism here the answer will be rickets okay beta now if tomorrow you come back and you say sir main rickets galat karke aa gaya fir kya hoga fir dukh hoga ye to common cheeze puch rahe the and the truth of the matter is in your neat pg and fmg exam they will be asking usual things in the exam unusual ke piche nahi bhagenge pehle rickets curvy ko to zarur control mein karne ka hai wo to aane ke chances bahut zyada hai sir badal to nahi jayenge kya mbbs badal gayi hai kya nahi क्या बीमारियां बदल गई हैं नहीं सो वी हैव टू फोकस ऑन द कॉमन फर्स्ट डोंट रन आफ्टर अनकॉमन डोंट बी अफेक्टेड बाय द वर्ड कॉल्ड एज फोमो ओके फोमो में नहीं आना है द फर्स्ट टू थिंग्स टू आई हैव टोल्ड यू आर द मोस्ट कॉमनली आस्क क्वेश्चंस इन द एग्जाम्स कंडक्टेड बाय नेशनल बोर्ड बोन ट्यूमर मेटाबॉलिक बोन डिजीज टिपिकली आइदर रिकेट्स करवी और सिंपल बोन सिस्ट जॉइंट सेल ट्यूमर एंड ओरिजिनल बोन सिस्ट one of the most commonly asked mcqs in the history of indian exams are you agreeing here okay beta next question let's try okay next question we will have a patient where we have to think of either we are looking at metastasis schwannomas nf2 multiple meningiomas okay okay beta everybody now we have the choices i am looking at the image and i am trying to think of the image and put them all together everyone try with me beta this is your pons cerebellum this is your fourth ventricle this is the petrous temporal bone petrous temporal bone okay ओके बेटा एवरीबॉडी एवरीबॉडी नाउ ट्राई एन आंसर बेटा आर यू रेडी ओके डू यू सी एनी डिजीज इन हिज ब्रेन यस और नो यस वन और टू वी कैन सी वन डिजीज हेयर वन डिजीज हेयर ओके बेटा आर वी लुकिंग एट आंसर माय क्वेश्चन बेटा आर यू लुकिंग एट अ इंफेक्शन इन द ब्रेन और आर यू लुकिंग एट अ ट्यूमर आर यू लुकिंग एट ऑन दिस कॉन्ट्रास्ट एनहांस्ड एमआरआई आर यू लुकिंग एट a tumor or a infection infection would be ring like enhancement remember ring enhancement tuberculoma toxoplasma neurocysticercosis will be seen as ring lesions here you are able to see a solid lesion 
there is entire of the lesion is showing contrast enhancement that means there is internal vascularity now tell me is it a tumor or an infection definitely tumor okay but a tumor very good now look at the tumor is it a highly malignant tumor or a low grade tumor it looks low grade why if it was highly malignant it would have been more heterogeneous there should be areas of necrosis it should be you know spreading into the surrounding tissue it looks like a low grade tumor if it is a low grade tumor then why there are two are they metastasis from some primary cancer no metastasis to the brain commonly go to the gray white matter junction previous neat pg question beta most common site of metastasis in the brain is anyone gray white matter junction most common site of metastasis to the brain gray white matter junction now so what is this location we can see tumors at the angle between pons and cerebellum so we can see tumors are in the cp angle we must be dealing with some syndrome some chromosomal problem which is causing brain tumors which are bilateral cp angle tumors okay now we go further the tumor is not only in the cp angle it seems to go into the internal auditory canal that means it must be arising from the nerve which nerve will be present here in the cp angle you have the seventh nerve and eighth nerve remember vestibular cochlear spatial nerve so it must be arising from one of the nerves and we know the classic tumor that you see here is the vestibular schwannoma if bilateral always think of if bilateral always think of anyone nf2 bilateral vestibular schwannomas are diagnostic of nf2 chromosome 22 this is how we integrate and get to the answer okay why they are not metastasis because metastasis will be seen in the tell me beta gray white matter junction meningiomas will have a dural base dural tail sign okay are you able to understand this meningiomas will have dural tail sign they will be based have they will have their broad base on dura metastasis most common site previous fmg question and neat pg as well most common site of brain metastasis gray white matter junction beta gray white matter junction nf2 which tumors vestibular schwannoma meningioma ependymomas are associated with nf2 okay with the kind you are answering in the chat box is making me super excited i already know that you are on the verge of getting a top rank i already can feel it okay beta now try that same thing with me again with the next question it will look like a longish question so i am moving myself away try to see the question and think of it now i will show you the image later on but already you will know the answer patient has a high speed motor vehicle accident his glasgow comma score is low ct scan has punctate foci of hemorrhage he is still in comma mri done mri is done so okay beta everybody without thinking of what is the question just think what is the condition that we are looking at please think of the condition so we are thinking of shearing injury to the brain which leads to a persistent comatose patient and this patient this is called as diffuse axonal injury investigation of choice anybody can answer investigation of choice mri these are all previous neat pg questions diffuse axonal injury investigation of choice mri and on mri most common site of injury is gray white matter junction most common site of injury gray white matter junction only thing now i've done is i've taken it ahead i am showing you a swi on swi hemorrhage will look like this this is hemosiderin deposit swi can show me hemosiderin what is swi 
susceptibility weighted MRI, it can show me hemorrhage. Long standing hemorrhage converts into hemosiderin, which can be seen on SWI. Only thing I have changed in this question is every time they have asked you, what is the investigation of choice for diffuse axonal injury? Today I am asking you, which MRI sequence will you use? Okay, MRI to karna hi karna hai. Main aage bad gaya. Koon se tarah ka MRI behtari nahi hai pe? Koon sa sequence? Anybody? The answer will be SWI. Because SWI can show me hemosiderin. Where will you find hemosiderin? Any place where you had a hemorrhage, chronically it becomes hemosiderin. SWI is the answer. It can show you hemorrhagic foci. So, diffuse axonal injury, again one of my bets, every year I see it is asked either in INI set or need PG or FMG exam. All three exams, they love asking diffuse axonal injury. How will you suspect? High speed motor vehicle accident, patient comatose, NCCT having non-significant finding, go ahead and do a MRI. Which MRI sequence? SWI, SWI, okay beta, SWI, full form, yes Subhash, I will tell you the full form. Susceptibility weighted imaging. Susceptibility weighted imaging, okay. Now other options, okay, I will help you beta. One bacha, work lacing, other options. T1 weighted image, T1 weighted image is the routine MRI that we do, T1 and T2. T1 weighted images are best suited for normal anatomy. T2 weighted image, pathology. What is flare? Flare is nothing but a T2 weighted image in which the CSF signal is suppressed. Okay. Flare is nothing but a T2 weighted image in which the CSF signal is suppressed. What about DWI? Okay, beta. What is DWI? Anybody in the chat box, let me know. What is DWI? Diffusion weighted MRI. Diffusion weighted MRI can show us the brain, anyone, infarct earliest. Brain infarct is seen earliest on DWI, okay, diffusion weighted MRI, okay, done, okay, beta, well done. So, we see the next question now. Next question, I have seen in the last few years, they are now gradually trying to add a little bit of ENT radiology in the question. I will show you a sample of it. I want you to look at this investigation and tell me in the chat box, what investigation are you looking at? What is this investigation? This is NCCT PNS, investigation of choice for sinus pathology, investigation of choice for sinus pathology. Okay, beta. Now tell me, what is this? Maxillary sinus hai, sir. Ye to pata hai mirko. Maxillary sinus hai. Okay. Ye to ethmoid ke air cells hai. Remember, between your two orbits, in between you have the ethmoid air cells. Okay. So the entire question is, what is this? Can you see there is a ethmoidal air cell which is so anterior that it is now below the orbit. We have an infra orbital ethmoidal air cell. It looks like an anatomical variant. And I want you all to see how close this anatomical variant is to the infundibulum. And because of this closeness to the uncinate process infundibulum, it can cause obstruction to the maxillary sinus. It can predispose the patient to sinusitis. What anatomical variant are we looking at is the question. What anatomical variant? This is the infra orbital ethmoidal cell which is also called as Heller cell. Anyone who wants extra marks from my side will tell me what is spinoethmoidal air cell called as and why it is important. What is spinoethmoidal air cell called as and why it is important? Spinoethmoidal air cell is called as O no D cell. O no D. O for no D. Close proximity to optic nerve. O no D cell is com important because 
it is because of the close proximity to the optic nerve. Concha bullosa is nothing but a pneumatized middle turbinate. Concha bullosa is nothing but a pneumatized middle turbinate. Okay, well done everyone. So we'll look at the CT again. This is your inferior turbinate. This is your middle turbinate. Okay. And this is your maxillary sinus here. You can see the maxillary sinus. And this is the area where you have the maxillary ostium, infundibulum, hiatus semilunaris, middle meatus. We are actually looking at the area where you have the osteomatal complex. And now I am sure you will appreciate why ENT people were talking about the Heller cell because of the close proximity to the osteomatal unit. And if this is, if the air circulation is not, is affected, it predisposes to sinusitis. Okay, beta. Now somebody is saying, Isme konka bolo sa. Nahi hai beta, middle turbinate ye wala beta. Ye middle turbinate hai beta. Middle turbinate is not pneumatized. There is no conca bullosa in this image. Okay, beta. Okay, mega. Okay, beta. Next question. Now, next question. More. Next question. You will have to rule out in this old woman with dementia, altered mental status, no history of hypertension, no neoplasm. You will have to differentiate between glioblastoma. Hypertensive hemorrhage, cerebral amyloid angiopathy, hemorrhagic metastatic disease. These are the choices that we are looking at. Now imagine in your mind, how will you see glioblastoma? Glioblastoma will be a heterogeneous tumor. It is a highly malignant tumor. It will be heterogeneous. It will be seen crossing the midline looking like a butterfly. With poor prognosis, it will be crossing the midline looking like a butterfly. Poor prognosis, highly malignant brain tumor. But my question number one to you is, at the age of 72, it is slightly a oldish lady. At this age, I am sure you might have studied in pathology, in very old age, metastasis become more common than primary. So, I am not really sure if they are going to show me glioblastoma. Secondly, any brain tumor, the image that will be shown to me will be a contrast MRI. Usually, brain tumor we see on a contrast MRI. Okay, so I have this in mind. Hypertensive hemorrhage, I will see hemorrhage in the basal ganglia and putamen will be the most common site. Hypertensive hemorrhage will be seen in the basal ganglia and the putamen will be the most common site. Okay, beta. But in the question, I don't know why they have written she has no history of hypertension. Now, maybe they are trying to rule out something. No neoplasm. Then why this would be metastasis? Because she has no neoplasm. I feel maybe it is not metastasis. Now, with this knowledge, I look at the CT scan. How this is a CT scan? Look at the bone. The bone appears white. Now, everybody look at the bone. It is a CT scan. Now, my question to you is, for brain tumors, we usually do contrast MRI. For brain hemorrhage, we do a NCCT brain. Now, why are they showing NCCT brain? Because this is brain hemorrhage, hyperdense hemorrhage. Is this in the basal ganglia? No, this hemorrhage is in the frontal lobe. Now, I am going to formulate a question. Let's see if you can answer. This patient has a lobar hematoma in an old patient. Any time you see a lobar hematoma in an old patient, we think of a cause called as cerebral amyloid angiopathy. Cerebral amyloid angiopathy. Okay. If it was a child with lobar hematoma, I would think of arteriovenous malformation. But if there is an old patient with low bar hematoma, always think of amyloid angiopathy as the answer. They always ask brain hemorrhage and stroke in the exam. Never miss these questions. Okay. Are you clear, beta? Everybody done? Okay. Next question. Let's try. 
for those of you who might have given the last neat pg exam will appreciate they love asking hiv they love asking hiv hiv patient has headache and mental status change but keyword is hiv if a hiv patient is written in the question i am already thinking of opportunistic infection opportunistic infection okay now we we'll look at the mri to narrow down what is it that you see on the mri of the patient 1 2 3 multiple lesions what is the shape ring enhancing lesions ring enhancing region can be tuberculosis toxoplasma brain abscess even your lymphoma in the brain can appear ring enhancing so we go back to the question what is it they have asked they are saying what is the most likely diagnosis so we remember the most likely opportunistic infection in hiv causing ring enhancing lesion is always toxoplasma toxoplasma okay why not pml pml e is caused by jc virus and usually there will be no enhancement pml e will have white matter lesions but there will be no enhancement no enhancement lymphoma you can have primary cns lymphoma in hiv patients and it can appear hiv ring enhancing but that is not the most likely thing you will suspect the first thing that you need to keep in mind is toxoplasma second thing toxoplasma the ring lesion characteristically have a eccentric target like appearance because of the parasite you have a eccentric target like appearance this eccentric target like appearance further tells me that i am looking at toxoplasmosis hiv patient if they ask you hiv show you ring lesion with target think of toxoplasma if they show you hiv lung x ray hiv lung x ray chest x ray reticular lesion think of pneumocystis gyrovesci don't forget hiv in your exam okay beta don't forget hiv okay done okay let's go next question now this time this patient is having progressive dyspnea old patient progressive dyspnea on exertion non productive cough progressively he is being having breathlessness non productive cough old person what are you suspecting you are suspecting interstitial lung disease interstitial lung disease if you do a spirometry in this patient what will you find restrictive pattern spirometry will be restrictive if you want to characterize anyone beta put the chat box on fire mujhe batao agar characterize karna hai ild ko to kya karoge anyone if you want to characterize ild what will you do you have to do a hrct remember this previous fmg question neat pg also remember what is the investigation of choice to characterize interstitial lung disease hrct hrct okay beta okay beta let's now look at it now one of the choices is saying lymphangioleomyomatosis okay beta everybody lymphangioleomyomatosis please read the choice beta lymphangioleomyomatosis is seen in male or female okay let me know in the chat box lymphangioleomyomatosis is more common in men or women anyone it is more common in women young or old young ladies it is always seen in young females young females even before i look at the image that is why you need to look at the choices i know that the patient is male why because i can read english the patient is male what is not the answer definitely this is not the answer okay are you clear with this or not lymphangioleomyomatosis also associated with tuberous sclerosis complex is almost exclusively seen in young reproductive age group females 
that is not the answer to the question okay beta next question let's see if you can answer beta are you ready to try okay now there are two choices one is uip one is nsip uip or usual interstitial pneumonia will show basal subplural honeycombing along with traction bronchiectasis along with traction bronchiectasis nsip will be the milder version nsip just one second NSIP will be the milder version and it will show us, give me just one second, NSIP will show us basal ground glass opacities, subplural sparing, silicosis, coal worker pneumoconiosis, they will have a history of occupational exposure. And they will also have some upper lobe predominance. All those things are not written in the question. But let's see the image first. Now we have sufficient knowledge about the choices. I want you to look at this HRCT, everybody. And I want you to look at the pleura, which is the outer margin. Abutting the pleura, can you see multiple cystic spaces sitting here? Please see here, beta. Plura ke saath bohat sari cystic spaces dikh rahi hai. Now tell me what are you looking at? Is this ground glass opacity or are these honeycombing? Kya ye ground glass opacity hai ya ye honeycombing hai? Anyone? Definitely we are looking at honeycombing. We are looking at honeycombing. Touching the plura, subplural honeycombing. So the best answer will be UIP. Silicosis will lead to upper low predominance with lymph node enlargement, eggshell calcification. All this is not shown in the image. All they are showing is basal subplural honeycombing. So the answer will be usual interstitial pneumonia. Okay, beta. Good prognosis, poor prognosis, poor prognosis. NSIP will show basal ground glass opacity with subplural sparing which is not the case here so we are ruling out the answer and the answer will be uip okay next question beta you have to tell me what is the most important word in the question okay what is the most important word in the question so that when i look at the choice i am wiser what is the most important word in the question the question is patient is having neutropenia so neutropenia again predisposes you to opportunistic infections like fungal infection. Which fungal infection is ubiquitous? Which fungal infection is ubiquitous? Aspergillus. So in patients who have neutropenia, they can develop invasive aspergillosis. We'll look at the CT now. What is it that you can see in the CT scan? CT scan shows a nodule in the lung which appears to be surrounded by halo. So you have a nodule surrounded by halo. We can see a CT halo like appearance. Because of angioinvasive aspergillosis, it invades the surrounding blood vessels, causes hemorrhage, and you can see a halo like appearance. And the patient is neutropenic. Neutropenic patients. If they show you a chest image with a halo sign, always think of angioinvasive aspergillosis. You will have a central consolidation surrounded by a ground glass like halo due to hemorrhage surrounding the consolidation. Okay, this is not a fungal ball, uh, one bacha is saying, Sama Harinini. No, this is fungal ball, the Purani tubercular cavity. This is a neutropenic marise. Aspergillus ka andar taakat nahi hai ki lung ko invade kar de. But because of neutropenia, it is invading the lung that is called as opportunistic infection. And it is causing a CT halo sign. When this is recovering, 
when you will have resolving aspergillosis, what will you find on the CT scan? You will find the air crescent sign. Once his neutrophil count will recover, resolving aspergillosis will lead to air crescent sign. And in the first initial stage, you will have a halo sign. One bacha Oswald is saying, sir, reverse halo kaha hota tha? Reverse halo, mein batata hon. Reverse halo sign is seen in cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. Can you remember this? Reverse halo sign is seen in cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. Ek bacha kera, sir, monote sign kis mein dekhega? Monote sign is seen in aspergilloma. जो फंगल बॉल होता है ना ट्यूबरक्यूलर कैविटी में सो मोनोड साइन इज सीन इन एस्पर्जिलोमा रिवर्स हेलो साइन इज सीन इन क्रिप्टोजेनिक ऑर्गेनाइजिंग निमोनिया ऑर्गेनाइजिंग निमोनिया वाज आल्सो सीन ड्यूरिंग पेशेंट्स विद कोविड सो यू रिमेंबर रिवर्स हेलो कैन आल्सो बी सीन इन द कोविड-19 निमोनिया क्रीसेंट साइन रिजॉल्विंग इनवेसिव एस्पर्जिलोसिस इनवेसिव एस्पर्जिलोसिस हेलो साइन ओके एवरीबॉडी क्लियर नाउ मोनोड साइन ऑन चेस्ट एक्सरे एस्पर्जिलोमा एस्पर्जिलोमा ओके डन ओके सो आई कैन ऑलरेडी सी मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर एबल टू आंसर मोस्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन बट लेट अस मेक इट मोर टफ फॉर यू नाउ लुक एट द क्वेश्चन एंड द चॉइसिस थिंक ऑफ इट व्हाट वी आर डीलिंग विद अ पेशेंट हैज फीवर राइट अपर कॉर्डिनेट पेन वी हैव टू थिंक इज इट अप्सिस इफ इट इज एप्सिस इज इट पायोजेनिक इज इट अमीबिक Is it hydrated or is it a biliary cyst adenocarcinoma? Is it tumor in the biliary tract? Is it a hydrated? Is it a, a amoebic liver abscess or pyogenic abscess? Now let's think of it. To have an abscess, you need to have a reservoir of infection. Pyogenic abscesses are associated with bacteremia. Pyogenic abscesses are associated with bacteremia. Okay, beta. Now tell me. Anyone? Pyogenic abscesses are due to hematogenous spread. So, single or multiple? Multiple abscesses, both lobes. Even if they are in one lobe, they will be like a cluster. Pyogenic abscesses multiple hongi, dono lobe mein, ek mein hongi to cluster ki tarah hongi, hematogenous spread hai, bacteremia ke karan hai. Okay? Are you able to do it? Okay. Liver, amoebic liver abscess will be seen in the right lobe as a single large abscess with associated tephilitis. Tephilitis means cecum ki inflammation. Associated tephilitis. And if you thump the patient, you will find tenderness. Patient might be an alcoholic. Right lobe, single large abscess with tephilitis. Due to spread is via the portal vein. Hydrated is an important question always. Will show a cartwheel-like appearance with multiple daughter cysts and can show a membrane inside. Liver mein kisi bhi bimari ko hydrated tab bologe jab usme daughter cyst dikhe ya membrane dikhe. So if it is hydrated, it should have cartwheel-like appearance or membrane appearance. A biliary cyst adenocarcinoma looks like an outlier. It is not identifiable at undergraduate level. It is like a multicystic tumor-like appearance. So it should look like a tumor with multiple cystic lesions in the liver. We keep all this in mind and we have a patient with fever. Fever. So they are now giving an acute onset with fever. Probably it is one of the two abscesses. I am already having a little bias because of the fever in the history. Now I am looking at the image only to Confirm. What do you see in the liver? Anyone? Multiple lesion, single lesion. Single large rim enhancing lesion in the right lobe of liver. Rim enhancement means infection, center liquid pus. So what kind of pus do you think this is? If you aspirate, you will find anchovy sauce. Can you tell me what are we dealing with? Can you tell me what are we dealing with? We are dealing with amoebic liver abscess amoebic liver abscess and right lobe single large abscess rim enhancement very important history 
would always tell you in abscesses they would have something to tell you that there is something inflammatory going on like fever in this patient pain fever pain are always signs of active inflammation going on there are you clear are you able to do it okay well done everyone so if you are able to do it what i will do here is i will now show you more questions but i want you to keep seeing what kind of questions i have picked up i because you know i want to spend my time with you effectively please see i know a lot of radiology okay but i am not showing you unusual things i am showing you common things that you see in the exam hiv simple bone cyst amoebic liver abscess because i know common things are commonly asked uncommon things will be uncommonly asked don't be affected by fomo thinking that you need to do unusual stick to basics you will pass the exam you will top the exam and you will tell the same thing many years later and that is going to be my legacy when 25 years later 20 years later one of you uh, head of department in one of the departments will be standing and saying common padho bhai common padho and that is what i want to remember and i want to tell you today ki unusual padhne se koi fayda nahi hoga okay okay beta next question we have a patient who has a functioning renal allograft renal transplant hua hai now i want all of you to think and tell me if a patient has had a renal transplant i want you to think and tell okay soch ke batana beta then there is always you need to do immunosuppression if you have a renal transplant if you have immunosuppression you can have infection so you need to cover the patient with broad spectrum antibiotics so the key word here is he must be getting broad spectrum antibiotics now develops abdominal pain and diarrhea must have some kind of colitis but is it ischemia is it crohn's is it ulcerative colitis is it pseudomembranous colitis what do you think now with the history which is suggesting that the patient was on broad spectrum antibiotics i can already now suspect i'm suspecting that because of it clostridium difficile overgrowth must have happened and that will lead to swelling of the colonic wall and the colonic hostre leading to a pseudomembranous like appearance okay ischemic colitis is typically seen in the splenic flexure with thumb printing appearance can you tell me why splenic flexure because that is the watershed area between the superior and the inferior mesenteric artery territory so ischemic colitis they will show me left side of the colon the splenic flexure getting involved crohn's disease can affect any part of the bowel but typically involves the small bowel involvement can be skip transmural inflammation comb sign on ct remember mesenteric border is involved more often ulcerative colitis remember the word lead pipe colon on barium study long standing ulcerative colitis leads to a fibrosed lead pipe like colon now all this in mind i want you to look at the image now where is the disease disease is here is it the splenic flexure no it is on the right side right sided colon looks like it has some swelling the colonic wall and the hostre are swollen why they are swollen there must be inflammation colon inflammation colitis this must be colitis but sir ulcerative colitis should start on the rectum and go contiguous here the problem is only on the right side does not look like ulcerative colitis patient is on broad spectrum antibiotics and the hostral swelling is giving a appearance which looks like a accordion what is the appearance accordion what do you think pseudomembranous colitis accordion sign on ct seen in pseudomembranous enterocolitis pseudomembranous enterocolitis super super awesome i am sure you all will rock the exam i am super sure that you all will rock the exam so i am going to give you a question of a old lady now second thing i want you to appreciate is in this image based question i'm trying to look at different body parts some questions on different body parts okay so now this patient has flank old lady with flank discomfort 
and all of them are kidney tumors rcc lymphoma angiomyolipoma oncocytoma imagine for a moment lymphoma can you have a lymphoma in the kidney yes but then you should have associated lymph node enlargement which will tilt the balance towards lymphoma angiomyolipoma should have fat inside angiomyolipoma will be fat containing oncocytoma will have a central stellate scar okay so rcc will be a solid tumor from the kidney a solid tumor from the kidney it may have a scar but usually if they show me a scar in the renal tumor i will go for oncocytoma keep all this in mind and now we look at the ct scan this is your liver okay iota ivc left kidney right kidney and there appears to be a tumor arising from the right kidney okay beta everyone now look at the tumor arising from the right kidney and tell me do you see a central stellate scar in the kidney yes there is a scar like thing in the kidney with the star like appearance what do you think now i need to give an answer probably the answer will be renal oncocytoma the central scar in if they were showing a central scar in liver then i will think of focal nodular hyperplasia if they show a central scar in pancreas i will think of serous cyst adenoma central scar in pancreas always think serous cyst adenoma okay how do you differentiate from fat beta dekho kya ye tumor mein fat hai ya scar hai ek bar fat dekhna mere sath beta ye dekho batao subcutaneous tissue mein fat ko dekho fat is dark you don't see a uh, area in the kidney which is looking like fat fat is appearing very different so always look for fat in the subcutaneous tissue to rule out angiomyolipoma are you clear now beta ajay gaur you were also getting confused with c mutena also was getting confused with c it is not angiomyolipoma angiomyolipoma will have a dark area because of fat how dark as dark as the subcutaneous fat many people do it wrong both of these questions are asked in the exam students are always confused because they don't see the basic logic if you see a central scar it is oncocytoma if you see fat area dark area as dark as the subcutaneous fat as dark as the subcutaneous fat think of angiomyolipomas angiomyolipomas are associated with tuberous sclerosis complex angiomyolipomas are associated with tuberous sclerosis okay done 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 okay shravan not nf2 and angiomyolipoma not with nf2 with tuberous sclerosis okay beta okay 16 year old lady uh, girl falls during a dance class and uh, x ray shown to you anybody can pick up the finding this child had a fall but the x-ray shows something else what is the finding what is the finding can anybody tell me we can see a bony outgrowth from the metaphysis which is pointing away from the joint pointing away from the joint anyone if you see a bony outgrowth pointing away from the joint we think of exo matlab bahar ki taraf exostosis which is also called as osteochondroma exostosis also called as osteochondroma galti kaise hoti hai bacche sochte hain exostosis paper mein dekhte hain enchondroma lagta hai same hai alag hai bhai exostosis ka dusra naam hai osteochondroma okay enchondroma will be a benign lesion seen in the phalanges okay benign lesion in the phalanges can any one of you all you smartest children on the planet tell me two syndromes associated with enchondroma do syndrome ke naam bataye jo enchondroma ke sath associated hai neat pg fmg mein bahut bar puche jate hain ek bar bol do aur kaam khatam karo all years and 
माफोसी ओल इयर्स एंड माफोसी सिंड्रोम ओके एनुरिजमल बोन्सिस वी ऑलरेडी टॉक्ड अबाउट एक्सपेंसाइ लीजन in the metaphysis of a child osteosarcoma will be showing sun ray appearance cord man triangle osteosarcoma the tumor will be extending beyond the bone with a sun ray appearance and a cord man triangle the answer is osteochondroma also called as exostosis now my question to you is can you have a malignant change in this disease can you have a malignant change in exostosis yes we can have a malignant change in exostosis then what should you do we should look at the cartilage cap on which investigation mri if the cartilage cap measures more than 1.5 cm do a biopsy if the cartilage cap on mri measures more than 1.5 cm think of malignancy okay done okay okay beta i think almost all of you are able to answer this so just to complete the discussion i will show you the thing that i was talking about this 12 year old male has knee pain what do you think 12 year old has knee pain is it something benign no 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 there is a tumor why it appears to extend along the sharpies fiber in a sun ray like fashion into the surrounding soft tissue what is the sign that you can see here you can see the classic sun ray appearance no one should have any doubt it is a osteosarcoma osteogenic sarcoma benign tumor malignant malignant poor prognosis sun ray appearance radio sensitive radio resistant what do you think osteosarcoma is radio resistant radio sensitive it is a radio resistant bone tumor which bone tumor is radio sensitive which bone tumor is radio sensitive ewing sarcoma which bone tumor is radio sensitive ewing sarcoma which bone tumor is radio resistant osteosarcoma okay bonus question what is the investigation of choice for stress injury to the bone let us see who will answer here okay in the chat box all the brilliant boys and girls please tell me what is the investigation of choice for stress injury in the bone if you are thinking of stress injury in the bone always do a mri because if there is a injury you will find bone marrow edema you will find bone marrow edema okay are you clear bone infarct investigation of choice for bone infarct or if they say investigation of choice for a vascular necrosis of the bone mri even for bone infarcts a vascular necrosis of the bone idiopathic osteochondritis like perthes disease we always do mri stress injury mri bone infarct a vascular necrosis osteochondritis mri will be the answer okay okay beta now we do some you know because we are looking at all systems so i thought let's look at some antenatal ultrasound also we will now see a fetus who has polyhydramnios and his abdomen is shown to you he has polyhydramnios increased amniotic fluid and i am showing you the abdomen of the baby and i think you can tell me what is going on minakshi saying sir ct kyun nahi karna minakshi 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 abhi exam aa gaya bhai bone marrow ki bimari mein mri cortex mein ct bone marrow mein infarction involves the vascular part which is the marrow you always do mri okay minakshi okay beta what do you see ek bubble stomach mein you can see one bubble in the stomach one in the duodenum you have a you have a double bubble appearance double bubble appearance is seen in duodenal atresia wo to pucha hi nahi hai choice mein wo keh rahe hain bhai duodenal atresia to hai lekin which chromosomal diagnosis do you think it is so we know by now duodenal atresia is associated with down syndrome which is trisomy 21 
the answer is trisomy 21 or down syndrome so i hope you can now see that they ask simple questions on ultrasound in the pregnancy also so i thought i'll give you a image based question on a antenatal ultrasound and i can see all of you are able to answer one more question on the basis of antenatal ultrasound i just want you to see the two images i will zoom them look at the shape of the skull of this baby and comment on the shape of the skull anyone please look at the shape of the skull and comment on the shape of the skull beta koi bhi iska naam hai lemon shaped skull because of this indentations that you see in the frontal bone it looks like a tell me lemon lemon shaped skull okay now second question is this look at this image and i want you to look at the i want your attention at the cerebellum of the patient i want your attention at the cerebellum of the patient any one of you can tell me look at the cerebellum and tell me what is the appearance bolo 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 banana shaped cerebellum cerebellum ban gaya banana ke jaisa okay now put them together and you will find a frequently asked question banana shaped cerebellum lemon shaped skull are seen in is this dandy walker is it craniosynostosis spina bifida holoprosencephaly the answer is spina bifida dandy walker syndrome will have a posterior fossa cyst with a genesis of vermis Craniosynostosis matlab cranial sutures are prematurely fused so you will have abnormal shape of the skull like you remember you might have heard of dolichocephaly, terichocephaly all different shapes of the skull happen because of premature fusion of skull sutures holoprosencephaly is seen in holoprosencephaly is seen in anyone trisomy 13 or patao syndrome where you don't have any midline structures both the side of the brain or the forebrain are fused together like a pancake so the brain looks like a pancake seen in patao syndrome or trisomy 13 okay okay beta more simple questions let's see if you can answer beta look at the x-ray and tell me are you able to pick the findings very fast by now tell me what is the finding you can see both sides hilar lymph nodes dono taraf ke lymph node bade ho gaye hain okay now is this tuberculosis is this an infection tell me is it an infection unlikely why because as a common sense i'm thinking why will an infection be symmetric why it is symmetric bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy okay now we go to the question this lady has respiratory complaints elevated angiotensin converting enzyme respiratory complaint bilateral symmetrical hilar lymphadenopathy looking like a garland looking like a wow looking like a garland this is called as garland sign on chest x-ray garland sign on chest x-ray what do you think this is not tb tb will have lymph node but asymmetric unilateral asymmetric sarcoid bilaterally symmetrical pneumocystis pneumonia ground glass appearance reticular opacity pneumatocele squamous cell cancer will lead to cavitating mass tb will be asymmetric gons focus gons complex pneumocystis pneumonia so what do you think we know the answer to the question is sarcoidosis can you tell me any one of you brilliant boys and girls can you tell me what will you find in sarcoidosis on a gallium scan what will you find on a gallium scan in sarcoidosis you will find two signs name the sign panda sign and lambda sign Panda and lambda are seen in gallium scan in sarcoidosis. Which lung cancer shows cavitation? Which lung cancer shows cavitation? Squamous cell cancer. 
which lung cancer shows hypercalcemia, squamous cell cancer. Pneumocystis pneumonia, remember HIV, 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 not written in the question, rule it out. And primary TB, primary TB shows Gons complex, a focus of consolidation, enlarged lymphatics, enlarged hilar lymph node. So lymphadenopathy can be found in TB, but it is usually going to be asymmetric because infections are asymmetric. Okay, done. Okay, one bacha kya sir, uh, sir, lung, mets or millery mein kya fark hai? Dekho, usually lung metastasis will be larger in size, they will be size of cannonball. Millery is hematogenous spread of TB, they will be size of millet seeds, 2 to 3 mm, cannonball will be larger. Okay, now, final question for the day, final question for the day before we go. This patient has a cardiac catheterization. Whenever you do a coronary angiogram, you always put the needle through the femoral artery. So you must have done a femoral arterial puncture. After that, he has a groin swelling on which you see this kind of appearance. What has happened here is, I want you to understand this is his femoral artery. This is his femoral artery. Okay. If you puncture it, suppose you injure it, what will happen? Some blood will come out of the femoral artery and it will start accumulating in the surrounding area contained by the surrounding soft tissue not by the walls of the blood vessel it is contained by the surrounding soft tissue the blood is entering into the swelling through the artery then it is coming back to the artery like this okay so, because of the injury to the femoral artery during catheterization, you caused a localized accumulation of blood limited by the surrounding soft tissue, not by the vessel wall. So, it is not an aneurysm, it is a pseudo-aneurysm. If you do a Doppler, the, if you keep an ultrasound machine here, flow towards the ultrasound will appear red, away will appear blue, you will see both red and blue. This is called like just like the Chinese symbol in which you see both, anyone remembers? Both black and white. The world has both good and bad together. Yin, yang, black and white, black and white together. But even in every bad, there is some good. Even in every bad, there is some good. Even in every good, there is some bad. What is the sign called as? This is called as the yin, yang sign. So, if in a swelling you see yin yang, that means both red and blue color together, it's a vascular swelling, this is a pseudoaneurysm. This is a typical appearance of pseudoaneurysm. The common question they will ask you is yin yang sign on Doppler is seen in. It is seen in pseudoaneurysms. So, I hope you enjoyed this session of image based question and approach to them thinking process, how do we go about it, but the critical thing is, I want you to remember this very important thing before we go for today. Now, many times we all do a mistake that we try to be perfect, but problem here is, what I have learned in my life is, to be perfect is not possible whenever we are human. Humans cannot be perfect, because if we become perfect, probably we will become God. So we are not perfect, we are not perfect and aiming for perfection puts too much stress on us and I have seen so many students who will say, Sir, Sir, abhi puri tiyari nahi hui, koi baat nahi, jitni hui hai, utni se kaam chalayenge na bhai, utne se hi pass honge, utne se rank nikalenge. Please, please keep telling yourself, I want to become better than my yesterday. I may not be perfect. Okay, mein keh raho, apne liye bhi keh raho bhai, I may not be perfect. Lekin I always strive to be better than yesterday. Main wo aap se bhi itna hi chata hoon. Main only thing I want from you is, koshish karni hai. Progress, progress, progress. Zindagi ka naam hi hai, seekhna. Bas, roj kuch seekhenge, roj kuch seekhenge, aage badhenge, aage badhenge. Koi baat nahi, aaj nahi aata to. Agli baar, lekin jeetenge hami, kyoki mujhe, I don't have to beat the examiner, I only have to beat my competitors. Or if you are giving a FMG exam, I only have to beat the 150 mark. 
डोंट ट्राई टू बी परफेक्ट बिकॉज वेन यू ट्राई टू बी परफेक्ट यू अकोमलेट अननेसेसरी रिसोर्सेस स्टिक टू बेसिक्स स्टिक टू कॉमन थिंग्स यू विल ऑलवेज विन द गेम एंड डोंट फॉर गेट टू राइट इट इन द चैट बॉक्स बिफोर आई गो आई हैव टू टेल यू के अपना टाइम बोले भाई अपना टाइम आगे बताएं अपना टाइम आएगा नहीं आएगा ऐसे नहीं आता किसी का नहीं आता भाई अपना टाइम बोलो अपोन खुद लाएगा थैंक यू वेरी मच सुपर ऑसम बैच आई एम श्योर यू विल गेट अ वेरी ग्रेट स्कोर इन योर एग्जाम आई विश यू ऑल द बेस्ट कीप रॉकिंग एंड डू गेट दिस पीडीएफ ऑन द डैम्स ऑफिशियल टेलीग्राम चैनल द लिंक इज इन दमेंट इन दिन कमेंट ऑफ दिस कमेंट बॉक्स